What does the word American mean to a Brazilian? Americans have a way of treating us as if we were an American colony, and we certainly don't like it. To an Ethiopian? Some, not many, consider the Americans uh, as the Italians just because they are white, and we, they have just complete hatred for the Americans. Uh, to a South African? The dawning of a new day. And yet I fear the famous words of Spengler. After the highest point is reached, decline begins. Uh, to an Italian? It often means people with no culture and the childish... We want, presented by the New York Herald Tribune Forum for High Schools. It features teenagers from 34 countries from all over the earth together in unrehearsed discussion of some of their common problems. Each of these young people was selected in a nationwide forum competition put on under the auspices of the ministries of education in their home countries. They were brought to the United States by Pan American World Airways and Transworld Airlines and are here for a three month visit during each day in four different American families and host communities. But let me introduce you to the students who are participating in this discussion. From Brazil is 18-year-old Susie Rigolette. Uh, Susie, how are things going in your host family? Any problems? Gosh, I sure have. Have you? Yes, you know, before I came here to the States, they told me I'd have to go to lots of parties. You know, they haven't taken me to one party and not one American date. I feel offended and left out. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Rena, from South Africa? Been having any interesting experiences? Well, yes, I had a very interesting experience just two days ago. I met a girl from Belgium, and, well, she spoke Flemish, and I speak Afrikaans, and yet we understood each other perfectly. Had you known the two languages were so alike? Well, I didn't know that before, except that I wrote to a pen friend in Belgium, and I, I could read the letters, but I, I didn't know that we would be able to understand each other so well when we actually spoke the languages. Well, that's a new fact for me, too. How about you, Yoma? How are you getting on? Oh, Yoma Tadesse from Ethiopia. It's exactly different from what my dear friend Susie had. Uh, in me, there are uh, lots of parties. I had been offered lots of parties, and I had to attend them and dance there. But unluckily, there are many girls who would like to dance with me, with me. And so the student council had, first of all, to receive a, an application for a dance and then have it signed by me. And on the whole, all things went on very well. I mean, with my family, the faculty advisor of the school, and the students. And I have a terrible thing. I couldn't tear apart myself from this community and the school. It makes it hard when you can stay only two weeks, doesn't it, and really? have to leave. I know, but if you stayed in just one community for the whole three months, you generalize and think that all America was like that. So it's probably fair, but I know it's hard. Uh, Mar Marcella from Italy. Uh, by the way, what are people doing about your name? Do they call you Marcella? No, American people can't say Marcella as we do in Italian, so they call me Marcy. Good nickname, glad you got it here. Well, how are things going, Marcy? Oh, quite well, I am quite at home here. But uh, I was really astonished because I've never seen people kiss, uh, who kiss so much as uh, here you do. I mean people, uh, of course, young person, girls and boys. It's part of your high school education, is it, Marcy? <laughs> yeah, it is. You take a course in kissing. <laughs> no. so look, um, uh, maybe it's too early to ask you this yet, but uh, could I ask whether you've so far got any dominant impression, your first impression of the United States? Well, you see, in Brazil, the impressions we have of the States is what you see in the movies. So when you see a musical, you think life in America is just dandy. Everybody floats around in a rosy cloud, singing songs with a beautiful and handsome young man beside you. Then you see a gangster movie, and all the Americans are bloodthirsty and violent. So when I came here with an American life, an American family, it was so different, I felt so at home. It's a real, a real family life.
You know, I've complained about the parties, but maybe it's just as good because I'm with my family every evening. We watch TV, we talk, we have discussions, we do homework. So it's just as good. Uh, so your image of America made from movies mm -hmm. where every young girl had a young man and danced all the time hasn't proved to be true in your case, has no, it? No, not yet. Maybe it will. Maybe that will come I later. I hope so. <laughs> Any other impressions? Yes, I do. I thought the Americans would be hospitable and friendly. And as a matter of fact, it became true. I proved it. Starting from the airplane, the hostesses were just as sisters, rather, and the uh, faculty advisor from the school, the, my host families, and everything got to be true. And it's really wonderful. I'm amazed. Is that your dominant impression so far from America? Anything here that you hadn't expected? Oh, sure. There is one thing that I didn't expect. <laughs> it's really funny, but I have to say it. <laughs> Go ahead. There is a dog in the family, I am in. It's called Trooper. That's his name. And it's quite familiar. And uh, at lunchtime and at dinner, it just pulls itself to the table and asks for food. It's really just contrary to, to my country. They wouldn't even, uh, dogs don't even pass the dining hall at all. <laughs> and it's rather peculiar and strange. You got any dominant impressions, Marcy? Yes, I got another one about animals too, because I was really astonished when I arrived here, seeing how big your cats are. Really big. Cats? Um, C-A-T-S? Yes, really. Cats. Are they bigger than Italian ones? Yes. Oh, I don't know, perhaps today eat uh, vit vitamins and <laughs> as and so. No, because uh, I went, I don't know if you went to a supermarket, mm -hmm. but I went and did you see the big section where you can buy all the food for the dogs and so? Oh, I was funny. <laughs> the first. <laughs> Let's come back to you, Rena. Any dominant impressions so far? Well, it might seem strange, but I think the inscription upon the Statue of Liberty which I also saw at my arrival at Idlewild the day. Give me your tired, your poor. I lift the lamp beside the golden door. I think that will be my one dominant impression of America whenever I get back and think of the wonderful time with the Forum. I didn't know it was in the airports now. Times have changed. It used to be just on the Statue of Liberty. Now I'm glad we've got it in the airports too. Now, uh, I want to come back to some of the fairly... Uh, uh, startling things you all said at the beginning. Susie, you said that uh, North Americans or United Statesians in Brazil, I won't call us Americans because you're Americans too, if I can think of it, uh, acted and treated you as if you were uh, an American colony. Now, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, you know, most Americans in Brazil are tourists. I live in Rio, and Rio is a tourist city. So they come there, they just ask, they act as if they own the world and they just look down on us like that. So we really don't feel like very at home with them. But I had another experience with Americans too, because I lived for one year in an American camp. It was near Rio. My father worked for Light and Power. We had to live there. We were segregated from the rest of from towns. We were just at little camp. And there the Americans acted differently. Well, for first, for one thing, I had to to learn the American language, the English language, because, as you know, the Americans wouldn't think of learning Portuguese. Oh, no. <laughs> so I had to learn it. And so I thought that the Americans are really very friendly. They love animals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they love animals, Yuma. <laughs> and they're always in a hurry. They often themselves don't know why they're in a hurry. They just run around. Um, what about Americans in some of your other countries? How about Italy, Marcy? Well, I, I know that there, is, there are a lot of Americans in Italy, but uh, I, who, lives there, who live there too. I think that uh, Italian people think that America, all the Americans are very, very rich, and so uh, perhaps they would like better if Amer tourists, American tourists, uh, when they uh, go to Italy, spend much, man, much more money. I don't know, <laughs> because uh, Italian people uh, thought that, uh, th think that Italian uh, Americans doesn't sp uh, don't spend enough money in our country. Uh, you, you said just now that uh, the Ethiopians dislike the Americans 
as uh, a result of the Italian. Yes, this is uh, really shocking for me. Just Why? Just wait. <laughs> it's really wonderful. Don't you know the relation between Ethiopia and Italy? From well, yes. From 1936 to 1941, would you mind telling me if you have come across it in your history? I hope I don't think so you would. But let me hear it. Oh, I, I like better if you speak. Uh, what what do you do you learn in uh, your school? Do you mean we you don't, don't learn very much about the very very recent uh, history in our school? You don't even know the uh, countries you have tried to colonize. Yes, I know this, and I think that uh, they build the many roads to in your and uh, I think that they did that good the things th too. Yeah, that's that's true. But don't you know what you did? I, I mean, didn't you learn in your history that what Italy did to Ethiopia? In what oh. year? And when did they go out or things like that? Well, don't you, you come across? Yeah. Well, on, tell us. <laughs> well, that's I'll a fair question, Marcy. Tell us what you learned yeah. or what you know about the Italian trouble with Ethiopia. Oh, I don't know very much indeed. I think that I, perhaps I studied something about it, but now I forgot it. Well, I'll be pleased to tell you if you haven't come across it in your yes. history. Well, it should have been because you have been in my country for five years, yeah. from 1936 to 1941. Yes, you came and bombarded our country, killed our all of people, and did all sorts of things. And still, you don't know the history of this kind of this thing. Well, luckily, you were kicked out in 1941. How are you, Mac? Yeah. Maybe she doesn't know it because it's much more important to the Ethiopians than to the Italian. Well, I, of course, I admit, I, it might be as well important to know for her, I mean, what her country has done, what, what countries Italy dominated, no, what, what countries uh, Italy tried to colonize. Do you see, don't you think that would at least be important to know what countries she colonized? It would be a little important to them and very important to you. It's very important to me and I know it well. And I have explained it to you. Thank I wonder you. if this raises a question that we ought to tackle. Is it a good thing that in schools today, in 1958, you don't learn much about 1938? Is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? And is it true of other, is it true of other events of the 1930s? Well, I, I think it's a bad thing. I would like to know much more of uh, how of uh, our government, of... Uh, our economy and uh, of uh, all the things that uh, uh, are happening now in the world. In our school, we don't study this kind of thing. We uh, just study history as far as uh, I think uh, the first, the first world, world war. Well, don't you ever get to study, for example, Italy under fascism and the Second World War? Yes, I think that uh, first we study. I'm studying the things next year. I think. But uh, I'm not sure. But now, at 18, your history that you've studied in school has just brought you up to 1914. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Well, if you don't study current history, what kind of things do you study in school, Marcy? Now, I don't mean to be unkind, but you said that the Americans had a childish education and were completely uncultured. What do you learn in school? Oh, we uh, learn a lot of things uh, which I don't know if they are very useful for us. For, for instance, we, uh, in my school, I am going to, uh, I'm attending a classical school. And so we learn uh, Greek and Latin, history and philosophy, and a lot of very old-fashioned things. But you haven't really learned yet about the fascist period in no. Italy. No, I think I'm learning something uh, uh, next year. Well, now, what about in Ethiopia, Yoma? What have you learned in school about, about this Italy? period? Yeah. As a matter of fact, we celebrate the day the Italians were kicked out every year. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it's our independent day. We had our independence even before Christ, rather. And we just uh, remember that date and just celebrate it. And of course, everyone, every individual in Ethiopia wouldn't ever forget what the Italians had done to us. Uh, they do to, uh, to us. They killed many people, innumerable. Why? Well, I never. They'd like to take to colonize our country, and we didn't let them do so. Well, we have to sacrifice so many bloods and things like that in order to keep the freedom of our country. Isn't? Don't you think that's good? 
Oh, yes, That's a yeah. perfect picture. I guess. Well, Rina, tell me about the education in your country. Do you learn really uh, history up to date? Well, I wouldn't say as up to date as in American schools, for in American schools, they seem to know everything more about the, the, the present history than about the past. But, and yet I think perhaps in, in, in this atom age of ours, it's more important. But I'd like to tell Yilma just something. Yilma, do you know that you were talking about uh, your, your very old country, but I don't know if you ever heard about the Zimbabwe ruins in, well, it's more or less in Rhodesia, a little bit north of South Africa, the Union. And we think that the Ethiopian people built it there and there can be found no traces whatsoever wh which people inhabited it or whatever happened. It's probably the Ethiopians, I agree. I'm sure. And that's the proof that our country, Ethiopia, existed before Christ also. Very good. You say <laughs> that your people came down from the Middle East. You are not native African. No, not e at all. Ethiopians. As a matter of fact, we don't have the Negro blood at all. And uh, we migrated from uh, the Semitic type of the Saudi Arabia and Yemen and the countries just away from the uh, Red Sea. And the, I mean, the origin could be said that some people dra drafted and came to the northern part of Ethiopia. And then they migrated inwards. And time went on, they stayed and, uh, and stayed, and then the Hamitic races from the bordering, the, from the south and from Sudan and things like that, from the countries but in if Africa. You, excuse me for interrupting, but if you don't have Negro blood, then, uh, this is news to me, the Ethiopians, I would think, wouldn't have any particular feeling about uh, race relations in other parts of Africa. We don't at all do, we don't at all feel any re relationship. We don't, it's none of our concern. I mean, we just don't care about it as we don't have the Negro blood. We shouldn't have to worry ourselves. I mean, the color you might, <laughs> the color of my face is just dark because it's due to the exposure of the sun. And my country is a mountainous country. It's 800 feet above sea level. And it's more or less nearer to the sun than is the other <laughs> countries that lay <laughs> near the equator. Yuma? Yeah. You're not white? And not black? Not black. What yes. are you? It's just in between. <laughs> Yuma, and I would like to know, are you, for instance, uh, very much interested in the South African race policy? Or, or do you stand more or less objective towards that? Not at all. We wish it. We, you would do thi you would do things fairly. I mean, I wish we wish we don't. You don't treat the South, native South Africans as you do right now. But as a matter of fact, we don't care. We just listen to your policies and things that go on in South Africa. But I'd like to ask you one question: Would it become more? I mean, more? Would it be? Uh, would you think it would be uh, a little? Oh. You mean Wait, just would, would, it, would the matter be worse or better, I mean, within these few years, or how, 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 what is the stand right now of could this South African problem? Could I just ask you another question before I answer yours? Yeah. Uh, is there any discrimination, for instance, between the, uh, the separate tribes in your country? How do you, for instance... I'm very happy you brought that point. As a matter of fact, we... Uh, the Amhara tribes consider ourselves superior to the other tribes, to the adjacent tribes that live in this same community. And we just consider them inferior and consider ourselves superior. And that could be a, a something of segregation, but it's not actually in the sense that you, t you take it and uh, the Americans in Little Rock take it. I mean, it's just very unprominent. I mean, do you, I'm sorry, do you mean that uh, you think that the other tribes are perhaps a little too primitive, for instance? Not a matter of primitiveness or so. It's just a matter of uh, ignorance, I shall say. Oh. I mean, the Amhara tribes are more cute and <laughs> clever. <laughs> and that's why, you know, they are just... That's your tribe? Yeah, that's my <laughs> tribe. <laughs> I'm but proud of very it. modest, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and Yuma, do you have whites in Ethiopia? White, white foreigners? 
White people, yes. Yeah, lots of them. We have the Americans, as a matter of fact. They're working in different departments. And I'd like to uh, say one point on that. They seem to be more cooperative in... Uh, they, are co they looked as though they are cooperative in my country, and I thought it was because they were in a foreign country that they should cooperate. But no, it's... I, I proved it right here. They come in, they have assemblies in communities and things like that. I mean, they are more cooperative than they, I actually saw it in my country. Yoma, just to get back to another point, uh, do you then think, for instance, it's fair that if there is discrimination in, in Ethiopia, even between, well, the same race and the, s the same nation... Not the same race, of course the same nation. The same nation. Mm -hmm. But do you think then it's, it's fair to judge South Africans as white towards black? If, if you don't, for instance, acknowledge the the less good Ethiopians, uh, well, I We do, uh, we do acknowledge them. I don't mean, we don't actually consider uh, our discrimination, what you call it, is not as prominent and worldwide known as oh, it's yes. in South Africa. <laughs> That's it. Well, what are we actually saying here? That there is all kinds of discrimination and discrimination is all right as long as it isn't too prominent or as long as it isn't between black and white. What are we saying here anyway? No, it's like this. She said, you, yeah, do you think your, the discrimination in your country uh, is good or the discrimination, the segregation... Excuse me, let's hear from Susie on this because Brazil's got a special oh, point yeah, of view, I'm sure. No, what they wanted to say is that he was telling her that she has discrimination. She's telling him segregation, he has... Segregation, not discrimination. I'm sorry, segregation. And she's telling him that he has a, a kind of segregation too. And he won't admit it. <laughs> I did. I just told you first of all. How did you happen to you know it? You consider your segregation different. Yeah. Yes, because you're all different. Well, what's it like right. in Brazil, Susie? <laughs> well, my country has a very good point, a point of advantage in that, because we have no segregation at all. And uh, we could be in the same position as the United States, because we had slaves just the same as they did, just about the same time as they did. Only. Our country was a uh, colony of Portugal, the United States was a colony of England. The Englands are Anglo-Saxons, the Portuguese are, Latin, are Latins. And the Latin race, how do you say, mingles very easily. So there were marriages between black and white, they formed mulattoes, which are not black and are not white, they mingle, they mingle, they mingle. So now we, we don't have black and white, we have all sorts of colors, from white to very black, <laughs> <laughs> with light brown in between. And in Brazil, there's just no question if that person has a little Negro blood, like here in the States. He has one eighth of Negro blood, he's considered a Negro. He has one sixteenth, he's considered a white. We just don't have it. You look at the person, look at another one, they're people. That's what's different. And I wanted to ask you something, Rina. You say there's a great segregation in your country. That's right. And in your country, do you have prejudices against the black people? Well, I wouldn't actually say prejudices. Perhaps I should just explain this to you. Everybody seems to have heard of apartheid during the last few months, years. And I think it's perhaps misinterpreted in, in most instances. I'll tell you what apartheid actually means. It means the development of two separate racial groups within their own areas. And Susie, you just now, you said that there is no discrimination whatsoever in, in Brazil. Could you just tell me more or less, are there more whites or more blacks in, in Brazil? Well, there are more whites. There are more whites? Yes, there are more whites. But uh, you can't say uh, white and black. White oh, and yes. not white. Oh, yes. Because the blacks aren't just black, they're all colors, as I told you. Because the whites marry very easily with the black and with the Indians. In oh, Brazil yes. that happens very much. So. They're just, uh, we just don't count blacks and whites, just people, you know, for instance, it's very different from your country. For instance, would you um, marry a, 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 a black? black one? I think that I personally wouldn't marry a black one, because my parents wouldn't approve of it. And you, that don't you think that's a little yeah. bit of discrimination? It is. I assure on my part, I wouldn't. But the real, I'm not a real Brazilian because my parents are Swiss. But the real oh, Brazilian, yes. they would. Yes, they would, and they do. They do very often. They do it all the time, in fact. Yeah. Yes, there is really no discrimination in this. But now, let me come back to the question. <laughs> you Fine. said you have a kind of uh, prejudice in your country. Do you have it here? Do you feel any prejudice against a black person here? Do you feel kind of awkward? 
Oh, no, not in the least. For instance, I think that uh, integration in America is perfectly right. And I think it should be done. And therefore, I approve of it. But I just don't see how uh, integration would work in South Africa, at least not for the present. For in, in South Africa, it's 3 million whites against 12 million. Whilst in, in America, it's, it's altogether different. And I, I'm, I'm quite assured that the present policy that we follow is going to be uh, the, s the solution of the problem at last. Actually, I hope so. Could you imagine the Brazilian problem having been solved like that? No, it, Why not? it won't ever work. Because people are people. They can't be separated. You stay here, you stay here. You are white, you are black. You can't. Are you God to judge what they have to do, where they have to stay? You have to go in those schools, they have to go in those schools. You marry with this one, she marries that one. No. No, it's not a question of who is God and who, who's going to judge. But it's, it's a civilization against a civilization. After all, it is, it is the white South Africans that have built up South Africa to where it is the now. Help of home. With the help of the other, but un with, the the heavy work. <laughs> with the supervision, with the of the. It has to be so excited, you know. <laughs> oh yes, perhaps it should, but I don't know. After all, it, it's not fair to to think that uh, South Africans should just should just quit all their good work right here. For instance, I can't, I couldn't tell what is going to happen in future, but I think for the present time. There, there is no other solution. For what would you think? Well, I think that people have the right to live as they want to. I think you can't put a barrier between people. Let them go and do as they wish to. If they want to go to your schools, let them. If they don't want to, okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> our time's up, and you're just beginning to get into the interesting part of the discussion. It's a good note to end on that you gave us, Susie. People are people. Uh, in a brief summary, I think I've learned a couple of things tonight. I've learned a little bit more about Ethiopians' racial background. I've learned something about uh, schools in Europe these days and <laughs> the fact education. that they don't teach current history. We may do a little more talking about schools. Um, I think I should say, too, that our purpose is not so much to tackle a single subject exhaustively and reach conclusions. Maybe at the end of three months, we'll just have a few tentative conclusions of the world we want. Our purpose is rather to give you some of the fun and maybe a little of the excitement that comes when this group of young people from all over the world get together and try to get to know each other. Our time's up, and so we have to say goodbye until this same time.